Now that we've seen partial derivatives df, dx, df, dy, etc., we can think of those as first order derivatives, meaning we only differentiated one time to compute them. Let's talk about higher order partial derivatives. I think it's easiest if we just look at an example. So let g of x, y, and z be x squared y cubed plus sine of z. Let's just compute some of the higher order partial derivatives for this function. What I might denote g sub x, x means differentiate with respect to x and then do it again. In other words, it's like d dx of g sub x. So that's going to be d dx. Now let's go through and just differentiate g one time with respect to x and we get 2xy cubed plus zero. Okay, that was the first derivative of g with respect to x. Now we differentiate this with respect to x again and we're left with 2y cubed. Okay, so we just double differentiated with respect to x. So let me compute g sub xy. This is what we call a mixed partial derivative. This means first differentiate with respect to x, then y. So you can think of this as g sub x sub y. So we're going to compute d dy of the partial derivative of g with respect to x. So that's d dy of 2xy cubed, which is going to be 6xy squared. We can do higher order derivatives in the same way, so let me do g sub x, y, z. So that would be like take g sub x, y and now differentiate it with respect to z. So we're going to do d dz of 6xy squared, which is 0. You can see I have a preference for subscript notation, but there is of course Leibniz notation for this as well. So let's go over the different notation. I'm going to suppress the inputs here, so I'm just going to write g sub xy or d dz or what have you. So g sub xy means compute d dy of g sub x. But if I switch entirely into Leibniz notation, that's d dy of dg dx. To condense this notation, we say dd is d squared, so we write d squared g. And then in the bottom, we just have dy dx. You have to be careful here because subscript notation, the order is left to right. So this means first differentiate with respect to x, then y. For Leibniz notation, it's right to left. So this means first x, then y. Let's compute all of the second order partial derivatives for f of x and y equals x squared minus y squared, and then we'll talk about what we've actually computed. So let me compute f sub x, x first. So the second derivative of f with respect to x. If I go ahead and differentiate f once with respect to x, we get 2x. So do it twice and we're left with 2. Okay, now let me do f sub x, y. That means d dy of f sub x. So that's d dy of 2x, which is 0. f sub y, y would be d dy of df dy. So that's going to be d dy of negative 2y, which is negative 2. And f sub y, x would be d dx of df dy. So that would be d dx of negative 2y, which is 0. The easiest interpretation to see is the first line. So if I differentiate with respect to x twice, I'm treating y like a constant the entire time. So that entire calculation happens in a single plane, in which case we're really just looking at a second derivative with respect to one variable. So the fact that we got 2 here is telling us that we're concave up in that plane. Same story for the second derivative of f with respect to y. We treated x like a constant the entire time. So that calculation was happening in an x equals constant plane, and the fact that our second derivative is negative 2 is telling us that any curve of intersection with an x equals constant plane is going to be concave down. Mixed partial derivatives are a little bit harder to see, so I'm going to leave the previous example behind and let's just look at these three pictures. 
Okay, for the first two, we're going to determine the sine of f sub x, y, and the third one, we're gonna do f sub y, x. So when we look at this second order partial derivative, we are doing d dy of df dx. So first we computed the rate of change of f with respect to x, and then we're seeing how that rate of change changes as we change y, the second input. So what I've plotted here are some little tangent slopes that we would get from slicing into the surface with y equals constant planes. In other words, they're like sample tangent lines whose slopes would be computed with df dx. Now differentiation is a really instantaneous calculation, so you wouldn't really have such a large range of values, but that's okay, it works for this picture. All right, so first let's analyze what df dx looks like. So if you follow the x-axis, as x increases, how does z change? That tells us how f changes. Well, it looks like here, our function decreases, around here it's flat, and then here it increases. So df dx is initially negative, and then somewhere in the middle it turns to be about zero, and then towards the end, df dx was positive. A little change in x was a positive change in z. Okay, that was all analyzing df dx. Now we wanna ask ourselves, how did those values change as y changes? y is increasing in this direction. So as I increase y, f sub x is an increasing function in its own right. So that's what f sub x y tells us. It's not concavity in one plane like in the previous pictures, but you do see how it affects the bendiness of the surface. Okay, let's look at the second picture. It's the same setup as in the first picture. So we're measuring the rate of change of df dx with respect to y. So I've put on here some sample tangent slopes that we would have computed with df dx. It's a little less clear what's going on than in the first picture. But it looks to me like we start with slightly positive slopes, and then by the end, they've turned negative. I determined that because as x increases, what happens to z? Well, here we're kind of pointing up, so change in positive change in x is a positive change in z. In the backward, we're pointing down. Now we ask ourselves, what happens to these slopes as we increase y? So we go from positive to negative, so df dx is decreasing as y increases, that means that f sub x, y is negative. For this third picture, we're changing the roles of the variable, so we're looking at the rate of change of df dy as we change x. So here, y is moving in this direction. So for all of these slopes, to me it looks like df dy is positive. As we move in this direction, z is going up. However, the rate with which z goes up increases as we go left to right, in other words, as we increase the x variable. So as x increases, f sub y increases. It goes from just slightly positive to increasingly higher positive values. Therefore, f sub y x is greater than zero. We're gonna finish this lecture on higher order partial derivatives with a really useful theorem. So this theorem applies whenever we have a C2 function. This notation C2 means that the partial derivatives of the function up to order two exist and are continuous. In other words, you're looking at nice second order partial derivatives like all of the ones that we've computed so far. So if F satisfies that property, then the order with which we differentiate mixed partials does not matter. In other words, f sub x, y would be the same thing as f sub y, x. That's good news. You can test this, just write down a nice function which has nice partial derivatives and, and you can check it. Let's just do it for this one example. So we're gonna compute f sub x, z and f sub z, x for the function f of x, y, z, and w is x to the fourth plus sine of x plus y plus c plus e to the x times z squared plus w to the fifth. Okay, so first I'm gonna do df dx. 
I go through the right-hand side and I differentiate with respect to x, treating all other variables like a constant, and we're gonna get 4x cubed plus cosine of x plus y plus z plus z squared e to the x times z squared plus zero. Okay, now let's differentiate this expression with respect to z. So that means that we're gonna compute d dz of the expression that we just had. So that's gonna be zero, negative sine of x plus y plus z, plus here I need the product rule, chain rule, so 2z e to the x times z squared, plus z squared times 2xz times that exponential. I'll leave that as it's written because we're just trying to check equality of the mixed partials. Okay, so that was f sub xz. Let's differentiate and reverse the order. So first let's compute df dz. I go through and I differentiate everything with respect to z and I'm gonna get cosine of x plus y plus z plus 2xz e to the x times z squared. Now let's differentiate that expression with respect to x. So we're gonna get negative sine of x plus y plus z plus, and again we need the product rule here, we're differentiating with respect to x. So I'll do 2z e to the x times z squared. And then plus 2xz times z squared times the exponential. Okay, let's see, do they agree? We have the negative sign, that's good. Then we have 2z times the exponential, that's good. And let's just check the coefficient here. We have 2xz z squared in both. So yes, they agree. So while this is good news, I would still try to think consciously about following the order. When you see f sub x z, that means first with respect to x, then with respect to z. That finishes our lecture on higher order partial derivatives. Thank you for your attention.